In this short video, we will have quick overview of pernicious anemia. So let's get into it. Pernicious anemia is an autoimmune condition. There is atrophic gastritis, leading to a lack of intrinsic factor secretion from the gastric parietal cells. Dietary B12 therefore remains unbound and cannot be absorbed by the terminal ileum. In the absence of intrinsic factor, only less than 1% of dietary vitamin B12 is absorbed. Its incidence is 1.6 times higher in females than males, and usually presents in more than 40 years of age. There is higher incidence if blood group is A. It can be associated with other autoimmune diseases, such as thyroid disease, vitiligo, Addison's disease, hypoparathyroidism, therefore a search for these conditions shall be done. Carcinoma of stomach is about threefold more common in pernicious anemia, so have a low threshold for upper GI endoscopy. Tests will reveal anemia with raised MCV. White cell counts and platelets may also be reduced if pernicious anemia is severe. On peripheral blood film, hypersegmented neutrophils may be found. As the red cell production is impaired, reticulocytes may also be low. Serum B12 levels will be low. Bone marrow biopsy will show megaloblasts. Specific tests for pernicious anemia include intrinsic factor antibodies. These antibodies are specific for pernicious anemia, but has a lower sensitivity. The finding of anti-intrinsic factor antibodies in the context of B12 deficiency is diagnostic of pernicious anemia without a need for further diagnostic investigation. Other antibodies include parietal cell antibodies with higher sensitivity but lower specificity. These can be found in 90% patients, but may also present in 20% of normal females over the age of 60. Treatment is with the replacement of vitamin B12. 1 mg intramuscular for 6 doses, 2 or 3 days apart are given, followed by maintenance therapy of 1 mg every 3 months for life. In the presence of neurological involvement, a dose of 1 mg on alternate days is given until there is no further improvement. It is then followed by maintenance as mentioned before, that is every 3 months for life. Response to treatment will be noted with rise in reticulocytes count. Count will peak by the 5th to 10th day after the commencement of treatment. The hemoglobin will rise by 10 gram per liter every week until normalized. The response of the marrow is associated with a fall in plasma potassium levels and rapid depletion of iron stores. Therefore, if an initial response is not maintained and the blood film is dimorphic, that is, showing a mixture of microcytic and macrocytic cells, the patient may need additional iron therapy. A sensory neuropathy may take 6 to 12 months to correct, but long-standing neurological damage may not improve. And this is it for this video. We hope you have learned some useful stuff. If so, why not to like this video? Also consider sharing with your colleagues.